about it. Good evening and welcome to our continued series of webinars as part of our District A-12 Lions Learning Program. My name is Lion Jamie Jones and I'm a past district governor and District A-12 GLT coordinator. We want you to participate just as you would if we were doing an in-person training. To do that, we have some tools for you to use that are located at the bottom of your screen. One icon is for the Q&A, the question and answer box, which you can use when the panelists ask you a question or, or when you want to ask a question. I will be monitoring the Q&A and will answer the question if I can. If it needs to be answered by the panelists, I will let them know. The other option is to use the chat box. And the third option is to put your hand up. Uh, the icon for that is there as well. And you will be, uh, we will allow you to talk. However, you will still need to unmute yourself first. This will allow you to speak and be heard by all. P please feel free to ask questions and do participate using the tools mentioned. This session is being recorded and will be available on our A12 Lions YouTube channel in a few days. Tonight, we are presenting a new and important topic all clubs will need to become familiar with in the very near future if they haven't done so already. Accessibility. I'd like to introduce our presenters. Lion Christine Engel could not be with us this evening. She's the MDA uh, Accessibility Chair. Therefore, past District Governor George Corrin will be presenting along with Lion Nancy Hargrave. Lion George was born in Hamilton, Ontario and worked for 35 years at the FASCO in multidisciplinary multi rehabilitation. He began his Lions career in 2008 with the Drumbo Lions of District A15, where he served as president, zone chair, and region chair. In 2017, Lions uh, Lion George relocated to Elmer and transferred his membership to the Thamesford Lions Club, where he serves as LCIF chair and school liaison. He was elected as A15 district governor for the year 2020-2021 and also served as vice council chair for the Council of Governors of Multiple District A in 2020-2021. Lion George has received two International President's Certificates of Appreciation, New Voices Leadership Award, and was the recipient of a Mel Melvin Jones Fellowship. He is currently the MDA Accessibility Co-Chair and the District A15 Hearing and Accessibility Chairperson. He and his wife, Lion Barbara, have two daughters and three sons, as well as five grandchildren. Before I turn the presentation over to Lion George, I'd like to also introduce Lion Nancy Hargrave. Lion Nancy has been a Lion for five years, serving as secretary for the Penetanguishene Lions Club for three years. Lion Nancy took on the newly created position of District A12 Accessibility Chair this Lions year and will continue next year. She is a retire, retired respiratory, uh, respir respiratory therapist having worked in acute care at Toronto General Hospital and in home care in Simcoe County for over 35 years. Her other volunteer work includes the boards of the Friends of Awenda Park and Life for Kids Canada and the Midland and District OSPCA and her church. Welcome Lion Nancy and welcome Lion George. Lion George, it's all yours. Thank you. I'm going to share my screen now if everything works. What can you see on your screen? We see your um, accessibility logo, but we also see your um, your notes. Okay, so that's not the right screen. Let me go back out of this one. Well, we had it working earlier. Uh, 
I'm I'm having trouble at my end with my system connecting. Okay, so it, like you said, you you had it. It worked like a charm the first time. So it's just a matter of sharing screen, and then you might have three or four different screens to select. Just uh, a matter of clicking the right one. Okay, that should do it. There you go. Yep, that's the one. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, so <clears throat> it's not the particular screen I wanted at my end, but I can work with this one. Uh, I want to thank everybody for asking to get Christine and I to present this uh, presentation that we both feel is very important. And I want to thank you all for at least taking an interest in the AODA and the 500 clubs and the 13,000 members that we have in the province of Ontario. This will and can impact with all this legislation. The logo, which is the first slide that we have, was created two and a half years ago. And hopefully all districts will use this as their logo and get a person or a team of persons to help encourage the learning and the implementation of the OADA. And this logo was created uh, by and led by, sorry, led by Christina Engel from A16. And we consider this as branding our multiple district of A. The community and other organizations will also be aware that we need to be ready for 2025. It is possible that getting us all to become accessible clubs, we could add this to our membership drive as a cause to be involved with. The purpose and objectives of the AOD are available on the Ontario and the MDA website. So for tonight, I'm not going to be reading too much of the legislation because we know it's available to everybody, but I hope to be able to give you a very good overview of the process. Recognizing the history of discrimination and against persons with disabilities in Ontario, this act is to benefit all Ontarians by developing, implementing, and enforcing accessibility standards to achieve accessibility for all Ontarians with disabilities. With respect to goods and services, facilities, accommodations, buildings, structures, and premises on or before January 1st of 2025. We don't do the enforcing, even though the guidelines, it does say enforcing. When the principles of policing, which was in the early 1800s, was developed, they, can, they developed their policies for communities to always be involved with the policing. And they wanted the communities to participate in keeping our communities safe and available. So we're gonna let the policing get done by the proper authorities if we focus on inclusivity. Providing for the involvement of persons with disabilities, this is our opportunity to become totally inclusive. The few definitions of the act. The accessibility standard means an accessibility standard made by the regulations, which is the paperwork that all legislation is adopted on. And the barriers that we are going to be facing with, besides just the regulations, the barriers are the one component that stops a lot of people from participating at a club level or in the community itself. So the barrier means anything that prevents a person with a disability from fully participating in all aspects of society because of his or her disability, including the physical barriers, architectural barriers, information and communication barriers, the attitudinal behaviors, barriers, a technological barrier or a policy or a practice. Now, I have questions that I'm going to put out, and we can go with the flow of how they get answered. I was understanding that we would have a Q&A at the end, but if Jamie is going to be looking after questions, that's fine. Does your club have an oral tradition or items that might reflect yesterday's ideals that might not be relevant today? 
a lot of practices that we have in our organization with our senior liar members is oral tradition. And a lot of the newer people are, might be scratching their head at some of these things. Some of the documents that are available on the MDA website and definitely the Ontario website. And Christina is maintaining that website with the up-to-date as information is available. But we have the integrated accessibility standards the Guide to Integrated Accessibility Standards, the Human Rights Code, the Ontario Building Code, the AODA Questions and Answers, and the Accessibility on the Ontario Building Code. We are gonna be talking about the survey that was created and sent throughout to all the district governors received it to send out to their clubs. Each municipality or county will have an accessibility chair each municipality or county will have a documented plan on their website. The pieces of legislation can be interpreted as needed by the person doing the interpreting. So every, every municipality has their staff reading the legislation. So unless there's enforcement or a real break in the law, it's gonna be very challenging to have it uh, policed. So it's self-policing, you might say. But the philosophy that I'm going to try to explain is if a person is driving a vehicle on a paved road and the speed limit is 100 kilometers an hour, but chooses to drive 120 kilometers an hour, they have broken the law if they get caught. In our organization of Lions International in Ontario, at least we are expecting all Lions to evaluate this AODA as an opportunity to become diverse and inclusive. In Canada, not all provinces have an accessibility plan to be completed in January of 2025. All provinces and territories in Canada will eventually have what we have in Ontario. Today is the first of ours for A12. And then for my for myself, the next opportunity that I'm going to have speaking is in A1. Okay, so. I'm just having a bit of trouble with my clicker. George, I'll just take this moment and give you a, a bit of a break and I'm going to. I'm just going to put up a poll here that we typically have in our webinars for the participants. So I'm going to start this poll. It's three easy, short questions. I'm launching this and feel free to answer this. Number one, is this your first LLW webinar? Uh, yes or no. And the second question, how large is your club? Less than 15 members, 15 to 25 members or larger than 25. And the last one, do you, do you prefer webinars or in-person training? Okay, thank you. It's kind of 50-50. This is the results of our poll. Um, so our participants, they've participated before. How large is your club? 15 to 25, and the one was larger than 25, and in-person training and, and in both were the popular choices. Anyways, George, that afforded you a little bit of a break. I'll pass it back to you. Thank you. I'm still having a bit of trouble with my computer. It's... Uh, did you start the slideshow? Um, yeah, okay, there so, okay, that's going to make me do it the hard way. Uh, for today, the Accessibility for Ontario's with Disability, the Act, AODA, is the meaning of, what is the meaning of the AODA? This is the objectives and the, the change model, very briefly, a change model. Uh, we have identified, uh, according to the documentation that was provided, we have identified eight different disabilities 
And then we're going to do at the throughout this session, we're going to do the connectivity of Lions, the OADA, diversity, equal, equal, equity, sorry, equality and inclusivity, which is known as DEI in the Human Rights Code. So to catch this off, a bit of uh, my background is, uh, to me, it's a little entertaining, but if we had this Petrustus in Greek mythology, he would be a, a bed and breakfast today. So I'm not suggesting that we all have a nap, but I would like you all to look through your lenses of life differently for this session. And has anybody heard this statement? We in Lions do it this way because we have always done it this way. <laughs> in this particular thing, this is the Greek mythology, and this is Procrustus. It's a bit of a cartoon. But in the literature, if you're in school, would be a little bit more quite nice looking, actually. But Procrustus was a stretcher. And if you can see this person in the bed, their legs, legs are too long to fit the bed. Mm -hmm. To Procrustus, this was a visible disability. A theory was then developed by this methodology and it is marked by arbitrary, often ruthless disregard of individual differences on or special circumstances. Let's say for this conversation, a visible disability. One first chooses the words or thoughts one wants and then selects only the data that fits it in their circumstances, disregarding data that does not. How often do we stop thinking about something when we recognize, I wonder if we could do it different? Or maybe we don't think about it and we just do it from habit. Again, I'm only using this theory as an example. It's mythology. The Crustus was one of my many villains defeated by the Greek hero Theseus, who was king of Athens. And according to Greek mythology, Procrustus was a robber who killed his victims in the most cruel and unusual way. He made them lie on an iron bed and would force them to fit the bed by cutting off their feet or by stretching those people who were too short. Something Procrustus takes no account of individual differences, but cruelly and mercilessly makes everything the same. And the term Procrustian bed is a scheme or pattern into which someone or something is arbitrarily forced. So this is how the AODA came to be, is in the years beyond, way behind us, they arbitrarily decided on what was going to happen to people that had some type of disability. The MDA, Mission of Accountability, is Accessibility Committee. Our mission is to promote lionism by ensure that we are accessible to everyone by removing barriers for those who face visible and non-visible challenges and by creating a culture of inclusion and acceptance. This is the start to establishing a different yet almost same relationship between the lion symbol and the accessibility logo. Now, what is the correlation or relationship in the community? And in, in this, we are become a strong inclusive lions club. The community can get a new group if members that recognize we are the largest humanitarian organization. We believe that we are the largest but a lot of the people that come from different cultures in our communities don't get into involved with lions. The act, the accessibility with the Ontario's with Disabilities Act, I'm going to always try to use the acronym from here, the AODA, but in Ontario, the year is 2025. The accessibility for the Ontario's with Disability Act will be fully enacted into law. It's a regulation, it'll be documented, and it's there now for everyone to read and understand. This conversation is only to share enough information to the attendees to be aware of the incoming legislation that can affect our organization. And changes can be very difficult for some people. 
The purpose is to improve accessibility for Ontarians with a medical or a physical disability to all public establishments by January 1st of 2025. This means that all businesses, public and private establishments, organizations, and yes, the Lions Club, to be fully accessible for people with a medical or physical disability. Interesting that this is only one of the pieces of legislation. For today, we want to mention that the intent of the AODA in conjunction with the Human Rights Code is to treat everybody equally without prejudice. The last number of international presidents have used the words diversity, equality, inclusivity, also known as DEI, and you cannot have one without the other. We understand that with Helen Keller, Reliance International became the Knights of the Blind. Did you know that she also graduated from college? She was not only speaking about the physicality of being without sight, a much deeper thinker, she was expressing disability oppression and liberation before the big speech and after her big speech. An interesting fact, that year was 1925, the greatest speech. 100 years later, the AODA arrives, even though it was actually created in 2005. There was an article written by Keith Rosenthal, and he quoted Helen Keller with people with disabilities is that the task of becoming a full member of society rests upon one individual's effort to overcome a given impairment and has nothing to do with structural oppression or inequality. The college that Helen graduated from was Radcliffe College. Radcliffe College was the Women's Liberal Arts in Cambridge, Massachusetts. Their counterpart was the male school which is Harvard University. Another quote from Helen Keller. My darkness has been filled with the light of intelligence. Once disabled, such individuals constituted a separate class who as a rule are poor, cut off from educational opportunities and segregated and marginalized. With your new vision and all of us working together in the understanding of the AODA, we can ensure that we can identify and remove barriers that will allow everyone to be treating with an all encompassing with a diversity, equality and inclusivity known again as DEI. And by as we move forwards, we want the districts to apply for their logo. We don't have a criteria, but if you are making improvements to, to your club and to your facility in any way that reflects AODA, we have a number of these logos to be put onto your banner. And it's a great way to publicize that, hey, our club is accessible. The people with disabilities, they know what that means. And they're going to be, we're confident, at least with my years of experience in this field, they're going to be very excited that this organization took that upon themselves to do this. Church, you want to take a, should we take a moment just uh, and give our uh, attendees, if anybody has any questions or comments at this point, uh, right. please raise your hand or put it in the Q&A, or if you raise your hand, I can unmute you. If there's any comments? Okay, Sharon Morton uh, has raised your hand. I'm going to unmute you. You'll have to unmute yourself. Sharon? Okay, took me a minute to find my mute. <laughs> um, I'm sure as a couple of you know me, so I've been in Lions for 25 years, and I am blind with a guide dog. And since I moved up here, I'm in the Gravenhurst Lions, and I was in the Bala Lions, so uh, I haven't had to do a lot of advocating up here. I uh, moved up from Brampton, but before I moved up in Brampton, I did have issues with guide dogs, you know, like I had the first guide dog in Brampton and the first time I went into Bramley City Centre, I was stopped twice in one day by a security guard, but like I'm going back to 1988. So there has definitely been a lot of progression, I must say, you know, in the years. Um, 
especially with the guide dog issue. Like, you know, you'll hear mother and kids and the kids go, go to the dog and the mother will say, no, no, you can't touch that dog. That's a working dog. So there's been a lot of progression and I don't encounter that up here. Thank goodness. Small towns. I mean, I go out without her and they don't give a hoot or I'm there. It's like, oh, where's your dog? You know, <laughs> so it's, it's sort of the opposite up here. But, uh, you know, in, inclusivity, it's like sometimes you feel like a bit of an outsider, you know. I mean, my club has been great. Like when we vote on anything, we do it verbally and everything. And I very much appreciate that. But, uh, you know, I think there's always going to be issues, always. It's, it's never going to be perfect. But all I can say is, you know, thank God for the AODA. And it is getting better. So, but there, there'll always be issues coming up. But uh, we just will have to deal with it. And a lot of people, too, you've got to advocate for yourself. You can't expect other people to or organizations to do it for you sometimes. Anyways, that's my piece. <laughs> thank you, Sharon. And actually, we should also mention that, you know, in this, these past two and two and a half years where, you know, we've, we've jumped on to online training. Uh, Sharon's made us aware of some of the uh, stumbling blocks we've had with, uh, you know, vision impaired people participating with these uh, on webinars. So um, that's why it works out well with the, with the, uh, the attendees to, or she was, she was able to raise her hand. We can unmute her and, Rather than have her chat, uh, you know, type in the chat or what have you, and it's. Oh, well, you wouldn't want that. <laughs> yeah, we're finding <laughs> we're we're finding ways to to make it more inclusive. Yeah, no, it's it's uh, it's definitely getting better, and it, and a lot of it too is you know you you've got to help yourself too. You know, I mean, you don't need a handout. You you need a hand up, mm -hmm. and you've got to advocate for yourself. You've got to learn these this technology and. I'm not the greatest. I have a great guy in Barry. That's my, my geek squad, you know? And uh, so you've got to learn a lot of it yourself. It's there, you know, as long as you're willing to learn. Okay. Thank you, Sharon. Thanks, Jeremy. Thank you. Back to George. Thank you, Sharon. That was for good words. Um, and it's so true. I retired 10 years ago in my industry and I have seen immense improvements in the last 45 years that I have been doing this. It's wonderful to see. And it'd be nice when we get to a full complement of organizations and people accepting what you're saying. One of the projects that I started when I started teaching this material, and we're going back a long time, was to get a group of magazines, a collection of magazines, sorry, and you had just put them on the table. This is a good club exercise. Uh, when I did this, I was teaching nurses. And we had all these magazines out. We had glue, scissors, Bristol board markers, colored markers. And the, the, the colored markers were a little bit for the pieces of bling. You have your learners uh, take the, select the pictures from the magazines that represent something about them as an individual. And they create a piece of art, whether it's one or three dimensional, their choice. And when they're done, they have to explain to the group who they are with the pictures that they, from the magazines and their artwork. At the end, the group will have a sense of who each person is as an individual. And we call this the holistic person. A lot of people, when they do the art in conjunction with themselves, and they get connected, they find things about themselves that they probably might not have ever shared, but they were keen on doing it. And it was a wonderful experience in every class that we did this on, that we were thought it was so successful. We continue to do that. So if you have a chance when you're doing AODA and disabilities to have them identify who they are through artwork and their expression. The next one that is the stages of change. Now there was a Dr. James Brochaska and Dr. Carlo Di Clemente. They created what they call the trans-theoretical model. It's based on many different theories of psychotherapy. The change model is just one I selected. There's many different theories to choose from and we're talking many. Again, this is just the one that I'm, I, I have used. The first stage is the pre-contemplation, and that's not ready to change. 
I felt it was important to talk about change tonight with the AODA, because some people are going to have to change maybe their attitudes towards somebody with a disability, or maybe their own disability to accept it and maybe be proud enough to say, I have this disability and I'm okay. But right now they're not ready to, to change. The second one is the contemplation or getting ready. So for tonight, we have a number of attendees and I'd say you're getting ready to change. You're not necessarily for sure know what you're going to do, but you're recognizing that there's something that needs to change. It could be problematic. And you start looking at the pros and cons of the actions that might be needed. And then the next stage is the preparation. You're ready to act into the immediate future. So tonight we're here and I'm doing most of the talking and I'm hopefully I'm inspiring you to move forwards and to promote this as a mission because we are going to be working with people that do have disabilities, visible and non-visible, that might not have the courage, but if they can see that we are trying as a public group, that we are so inclusive that we want to do this, hopefully this will happen from today. And then the action starts. What are we going to do? Or good, let's get this done, set some goals, and maybe get somebody involved with your club. Now, Sharon happens to be blind. I'm profoundly deaf. So there's two people that can share a great deal of life experiences if we are willing. In my case, I have no problem sharing my disabilities. Uh, it's nothing. I'm not ashamed of what I have become. I'm still the same person I was a long time ago. I'm just better looking and charming with disabilities. There are four labels and only part of the model that we have. And there's more, there's like 10, but there's processes involved and there's programs involved with each of the stages. It can become too complicated. But it, the point would be is that there are stages of change that everybody has to go through when something big is coming on. We, when we become inclusive, I'm, I'm hoping that the people that use TikTok platforms will share how they have become part of and accepted. So for years, and I'm gonna refer some of the things that Sharon said, is you have to advocate for yourself. I'm hoping that we as lions are not going to take away from their independence, but we want to do advocating for them, for ourselves as well, to say we are inclusive and your disabilities do not matter to us. We will figure it out as we go. So half measures avail nothing to us. And the next section that we're going to be talking about is the and the AODA covers the temporary, short-term, long-term, and permanent disabilities under the following eight categories. After we have discussed these eight topics, I will connect briefly on how to identify barriers for the clubs to address each of the disabilities that I refer to. And uh, Nancy, I believe you have sent yours out to the appropriate clubs in your district. But this document will help us collect the appropriate data that the clubs need to address issues and concerns as we want to help the ones that want to do it but don't know how. The first disability that we're going to talk about is legally blind. Now this is the definition that comes from the Disability Act. Legally blind, We've heard about it, we think we understand it, but this is what they say it is. Legally blindness is a level of blindness defined by the law, which limits or some activities for safety reasons, such as driving. The term blindness covers a broad spectrum of visual disabilities from sight impairment that impairs activities like cooking, reading, or driving, all the way to complete blindness. Many people do not equate wearing glasses that we have a visual impairment. People who wear glasses, these are considered an assistive device. I spent my lifetime making assistive devices for people with diseases or handicaps or disabilities or impairments. And they were struggling to know that they had to use an assistive device to make their fulfillment of a quality of life. 
and took some adjusting for people to use an assistive device. Our CNIB in Ontario, I have been in touch with a few of them. They are waiting for the Lions Club because of the AODA to contact the CNIB who would be considered the resident experts for Ontario. I'm gonna go further and take it away beyond Ontario, but we live here in Ontario. They would be happy to come to clubs, to educate members, to teach individuals on site while well, COVID's over, and then either on Zoom meetings or however they could do it. They would really enjoy that opportunity. The next one is the hearing loss. Now, I didn't mention the symbols that we had on these, but these come from the net as a disability area. So the hearing loss has two hands and they're doing sign language. People with hearing loss may be deaf, unable to hear anything, or partially or profoundly deaf. People with hearing loss often wear hearing aids or use forms of pocket talkers, microphones, and headset devices. They may find a phone amplifier useful. People with hearing loss can also use the TTY devices, which is a teletypewriter, a small keyboard and display, email packages, and of course the American Sign Language. And the one thing that's not in the, in the legislation is the Apple telephone. It's a wonderful tool. Now, I have a personal note that I know we're improving in society. I attended a Zoom meeting recently and I was, had a speaking role. And there was uh, people sitting at the Zoom meeting and they were 10 to 15 feet away from their computer microphone. And I texted the sound guy to say, we can't hear him. But they know I'm profoundly deaf. And the answer that night was, I could buy some specialized equipment that would make it easier for me to hear these things. Now, I'm not opposed to it. I have a beautiful sound system in the house, which my family gets to hear when I'm on a Zoom meeting. But I thought, you know what? Uh, wouldn't it have been just as easy as the sound person to contact the people and say, could you move closer to the microphone? we have people that can't hear you but it didn't do that so as in a situation that comes up though we have to advocate for ourselves yes but in the lions organization i'm hoping that we'd be a little bit more uh easier going on our, our groups of people now the canadian hearing services is also i've been working with them and they are really just as much, uh, they've been A15, they've come out to a number of clubs and they give educational programs. That, I shouldn't say they come out to clubs. They have Zoomed in and they've had training uh, made for members, uh, husbands or partners and wives and partners, and just learning about hearing aids, learning about all of the stuff that's available. They would have no idea how to purchase it. And they have in-house training and their prices are ridiculously low. They're sponsored by the government, both those agencies are, and they get a lot of fundraising, but they're there to provide a service to us as well. So I encourage you to reach out to these organizations and have them come to the clubs and help them educate them, takes the pressure off of the accessibility chairs for the district and the clubs. Yes. Did somebody have a question? Uh, I don't see anybody's hand raised. Okay, it was just a noise I heard. All right. I think Nancy was agreeing with you. Yeah. Um, the next one, uh, the deaf and blind, hearing and blindness, approximately 50% of deaf blind people are born deaf or with a hearing loss and then develop blindness as the age. Deaf blind people may use some types of assisted devices as people with hearing and or vision loss use question has anyone aware of the canadian helen keller center in toronto hopefully at the end of this uh, you people will all say yes we know it quite well and there also we have a canadian her name is not helen keller but the canadian helen keller a may brown was the first canadian deafblind to graduate from university she's connected to the helen keller center in toronto Mobility. 
Now this has a person in a wheelchair. One of the things that I was so pleased with when I saw my two granddaughters, each of my granddaughters had Barbie dolls. And her Barbie doll collection, they had Barbies that I had never seen that had prosthetic arms, legs, they had wheelchairs for Barbie. They had transgender Barbies. They had different color skin Barbies, different hair Barbies. Um, the male Barbies, as in transgender, the kid, my grandkids had a whole slew of these. And I said to my children, where in the world did you buy them? Toys R Us. So my wife, Barbara and I, we got in the vehicle and we went to Toys R Us. I am so thrilled to know that our grandchildren are learning about this on their own and accepting and playing dolls at that age. And they have people in school, though the two granddaughters do not have anybody in their school that has prosthetic limbs or in a wheelchair, but they're so accepting to them. And uh, to me, that is a wonderful place to be for the children. So we might, we were never trained in that. In fact, I know more guys that pulled their arms and legs off of Barbie dolls on their sisters. Uh, that's just what we did. I don't think the brothers of their, my granddaughters are pulling their uh, prosthetic arms off. And if they aren't, I'll be very proud because they know that, well, you can't do that because that, that's helping them do what it is that they do. So people with physical disabilities may find it difficult to sit, stand, or move about freely with or without pain. Moving from different surfaces or grades can be challenging, trip hazards, fear of falling, recovering from a slip or fall, standing from a sitting position or a reversal. They're accepted at parents with their gait, i.e. they are not under the influence of a substance. In my career, I had a lot of those people that were injured or had a disease. They were always told that they shouldn't drink so much and they should get off you know, the pills that they're taking or whatever. So many people with physical disabilities may or not choose assistive devices, such as wheelchairs, crutches, canes, walkers. If it is recognized that an individual uses any types of assistive devices, we should respect that individual and accommodate. During my many opportunities to facilitating people with mobility issues, another story, a person was trying to get into an elevator and the occupant, occupants inside the elevator stated some very nasty remarks to this lady that was trying to get in. So I did get off the elevator and I held the door open. Needless to say, the occupants were not too thrilled with me either, but I sensed that she had a disability. And when I got to her and I just spoke very softly to her and she says to me, enough loud enough because she didn't have a control of her voice. She said, thank you for stopping. I have Parkinson's and I have frozen and I don't know when I'm going to not be frozen. And then a couple of seconds later, her body decided it was ready to move. And she got onto the elevator and she got off the elevator and I walked without her to the where she was going and she didn't freeze again. A very common um, freezing for people with Parkinson's. So they thought she was drunk because she was just standing there looking at them. The next one is the mental health. This is incredibly challenging to talk about and have it explained easily and to have it understood. It takes quite a bit of, well, years of experience and wisdom make it easier. But when you have a mental health impairment or disabilities and it does impair your thinking, your feelings and your behaviors, visible and non-visible clues to a mental health, many people find themselves feeling differently from day to day. Society dealing with all these new issues of the world pandemic, they have been tested with their patients. And you might have noticed yourselves when you go some places that the people aren't quite as nice as what you remembered two years ago, or some of them are even nicer. Mental health is a very complicated issue. And as Melvin Jones has taught us, you can't get very far until you start doing something for somebody else. 
when I worked with a lot of the injured workers, what happened, we didn't plan on this to happen, but they became such advocates for helping other people because they received, as Sharon had mentioned, a hand up, not a handout. Wonderful experiences. Intellectual or development disabilities. People with intellectual or developmental disabilities experience problems communicating, looking after themselves or being socially adept. People with intellectual and development disabilities sometimes make use of assistive devices such as large display calculators, alarm watches, support persons or service dogs, or voice actuated recorders. And what we see in society with some of these pieces of assistive devices, some people, and we call it microaggression, they don't really know they're doing it, but they frown or they tap their toes and they don't quite understand and they don't look, you know, they're kind of confused as why this person would need that. And the person that needs this might recognize that look and that makes them feel even worse than maybe they, what they did, or they get angry that they're happy with what they are. And they just, why are these people, why do they have to do that? Why can't they change as fast as I have to change? Learning disabilities affect a person's ability to understand verbal or nonverbal forms of communication. Nonverbal information can be written, audio, podcasts, for example. So this could be considered a podcast on YouTube or an arithmetic a handling of receiving change, for example. And this story is quite old of people at the grocery store, at the cashier, and they're fumbling in their change purse or their wallet to get the coins out to pay for things. Yes, Interact has made life different if some of these people use it. A lot of them do and a lot of them don't. But to be patient for people that are there, they're doing the best they can to get the food that they want, just like we're there. But again, you see people at the grocery store in the lineup saying things or doing things that they don't realize how in that impacts the individual. Speech or language disabilities. I don't know what my voice sounds like. I can feel it, it's quivering. So I do have a voice issue. Hopefully my words are audible. That's in either clear enough. But people with a speech or language disabilities may have difficulty articulating, may speak softly, or may lack range of expression. Examples of speech and do language disorders include stuttering, repeating groups of letters, and inability to say specific words. This is another case where we, not knowing, could be aggressive to somebody if we think they're under the influence because they are not speaking clearly or they think that they're under the influence because of the way they're speaking. We always have to be careful. And that's a big learning curve. And the AODA is there to help us identify these particular things so we don't get ourselves into trouble. Connecting the clubs to the disability, disabilities, barriers and behaviors. The MDA survey that was sent out, I'm not putting it up on the screen because it's quite a large document. It's there to, for your benefit. Now there's questions on that survey that could be considered, now we shouldn't ask that question. But our philosophy was, and I'm gonna use Nancy because she sent hers out to the district. So, and she said, she's shaking her, she said, yes, I've done that. Okay. so. Nancy, we're hoping that your members are going to call you and say, what do you mean invisible disabilities? And if you can't answer that, you get a hold of Christina or myself or somebody that, if it's an answer that you couldn't, or a question that you couldn't answer, to get the conversation started. Now, we weren't trying to do things we shouldn't be doing under the Human Rights Code, but the club and any one of our clubs, we hope that they would pick a person that has knowledge of the club members to can say, well, you know, these individuals have shared with me that they have, I'm just going to say an anxiety disorder. And this is what happens when they do this. And these are some of the, their consequences of that particular illness. And if we, this individual has that, they can put check marks on there and we can start adding up and collecting that information for the clubs or for the district chairperson to give out in their areas where they have concerns and questions. 
we are dedicated to finding as much information or resources to the clubs. That's the purpose of the survey. It's strictly a survey to gather information so that Christina, I, and the other team members, we can collect data to help everybody else out. What is the ultimate freedom but to be self-respecting and self-supporting? To be inclusive club is to pave the right of way to anyone and everyone that wants to be involved with making this someone else's life better or even oneself better person. My background in formal education is rehabilitation, which is to assist people to help themselves to become what they desire to be or to be a part of, to offer a hand up with dignity and respect. Each of us does have a social responsibility to serve others. A concept became reality when the white cane became the, for the white cane for the blind was invented, presented, and promoted to our nations for the opportunity for mobility for individuals to be independent, to move freely and with confidence. For us to demonstrate to our communities to constantly remove barriers that are in place, whether intentionally or by accident, that will allow the communities to become totally inclusive. As in any club or district, can we attempt the most challenging obstacles? And yet sometimes we need a piece of legislation to guide us in a direction. President Kennedy contributed to the development of the community-based health facilities. Canada followed. In 1963, President John F. Kennedy signed a bill with the intent of, bill, of the bill improving the lives of millions of Americans living with intellectual and developmental disabilities. Over 50 years ago, when President John F. Kennedy signed the Community Mental Health Act into law, that piece of paper that guides us to do things in our communities. Now, this was also the development, starting of the development for the Special Olympics, which was started by Eunice Kennedy Shriver in August of 1968. Coincidentally, that was in Chicago as well. Well, things always happen in Chicago. Uh, bring it back to Ontario, Canada. In the early 1960s, in Toronto, Dr. Frank Hayden, a sports scientist at the University of Toronto. Dr. Hayden was studying the effects of regular exercise and the fitness levels of children and in, with an intellectual disability. Dr. Hayden's research was nothing short of groundbreaking. It challenged the prevailing mindset of the day. One that claimed that it was the disability itself that prevented children from fully participating in play and recreation. People blamed the disability. Through rigorous scientific methods, Dr. Hayden proved that it was a simple lack of opportunity to participate. Given that opportunity, people with an intellectual disability could acquire the necessary skills to participate in sport and become physically fit. Something to add some spice for the Toronto Maple Leaf fans. At that time in that decade, Captain George Armstrong also served as the honorary captain of the Special Olympics team, Go Leafs. That was quite a decade for the Toronto Maple Leafs. It was the best decade because they won three Stanley Cups in 63, 64, and 67. Another interesting fact, in the year the Lions became the Lions, the Toronto Maple Leafs became the Toronto Maple Leafs. I didn't know that until I did some research in 1917. Lion George, <laughs> if I could just, uh, just a reminder, we're, we're just coming to the bottom of the hour. Uh, we like to keep these uh, webinars to about an hour, so we're, we're coming close to the conclusion of this. So uh, I know that you're, you want uh, Lion Nancy to speak about grants, but I'm just uh, giving you a, a heads up that we're coming close to the end of our presentation. Okay, thank you. What I will do is I will remove the, um, the food component of this presentation. I will finish off with 
back to Ontario, Canada. I was just bragging about Canada. <laughs> How would one person feel emotionally being the person on the Leafs team and the honorary captain for Special Olympics? Next up is uh, Lion Nancy Hargrave, and I'll just give you that. There it is there. So uh, Lion Nancy, whenever you're ready to take over, I will take a drink, uh, non-alcoholic, of course, and you can have the slide to do your grants for accessibility. Thank you. Um, yeah, what I had been asked by one of the clubs in our district to see what's available to help a club who needs to renovate their facility because it would be fairly expensive. And it's uh, a facility that gets used by more than just the Lions Club, uh, it's the community as well. So I did some research and got it all on this slide that the government of Canada um, does have um, a program called Enabling Accessibility Fund, but all three program components closed in 2021. Then I looked at the Ontario Ministry for Seniors and Accessibility. So um, we actually have a ministry in Ontario for that accessibility. It's called Enabling Change Program, but building renovations are not eligible. It's more of a program for um, education of people. It's, you can get a grant to run a program to train your employees on the knowledge uh, for accessibility. I looked at LCI. I could not find any grants related to accessibility. I looked at the Rick Hansen Foundation and they do have something called Access for All Canada and Barrier Buster Projects. But again, those projects are closed. So the only um, the only source is the Ontario Trillium Foundation. They have a capital grant which supports capital projects that improve access to community spaces, activities, and services, and it's to facilitate community members' full participation in the life of the community, improve and build community spaces, make programs better and more efficient, and make better use of technology. So that to me sounds like a good fit with Lions Clubs. And there is a deadline this year of August the 3rd, 2022, and the grant amounts are uh, starting at 5,000 and up to 150,000. And that, that's the website, um, uh, OTF, so um, Ontario Trillium Foundation.ca, our grants, community investments, grants, capital grant. The line, Nancy, would they be like a matching grant or would they be? Uh, no, nope, like it's an actual somebody... grant. Didn't have it, it is a matching grant. No, it's not a matching grant. I think so if, it was, if it was assessed, let's just say it was going to cost the club fifty thousand dollars to renovate to bring it up in, in conformance, they could apply for that full amount. I believe so. That's what I remember reading there. Yeah, okay, thank you. Thank you, Lion Nancy. Back to you, George. Thank you. To review. Um, let me just get through a few. Uh, the meaning of the AODA change. The definition of a disability, I'm gonna recap. The, uh, the AODA Act 2005, get ready for 225, uses the same definition of disability as the Ontario Human Rights Code, which includes visible and non-visible disabilities. Any degree of physical disability, infirmity, malformation, or disfigurement that is caused by bodily injury, birth defect, or illness, and without limiting the generality of foregoing, including diabetes, alopecy, brain injury, or degree of paralysis, deafness or hearing impairment, muteness or speech impediment. That sums it up. Though, if we see something that needs to be dealt with, with an impairment, that's AODA. Lions are going to be impacted by the AODA and the human rights. They work together. So hopefully we, we just all figure out how we're going to accomplish everything that needs to be done. The stages of change, we know it's gonna be challenging for some clubs and some members to work on change, but hopefully we can put together maybe the GAT team since uh, past district governor Jamie Jones is GLT, maybe he can find ways to develop the stages of change. There's some really wonderful programs out there. But Dr. Prochaska's 
uh, Jax is sorry, and his colleagues, they, they started the process involving progress through a series of stages of change. So it's all doable. And we've come so far in humanities to be able to teach these type of things. To wrap this up now, diversity. Diversity typically means a proportionate representation across all dimensions of human differences. Equality is fair treatment for all while striving to identify and eliminate inequalities and barriers. Inclusivity. Inclusion means that everyone is included, visibly heard and considered belonging. And then belonging that everyone is treated and feels like a member of the larger community that can thrive together and work continuously to make other people's lives better. So on that note, uh, Lion Christina and myself would like to thank everybody for allowing us this time to share our thoughts on wanting to participate in all districts with any club within the MDA to help them get to where they, we need to go as an organization. <clears throat> on that note, uh, past District Governor Jamie Jones, I'm done. <laughs> well, Lion, past District Governor George, thank you so much for that message. Ironically, uh, last week, our, our webinar was on diversity, which um, was the perfect prelude to this webinar this week. Uh, information, I'm sorry to cut you short with uh, um, your, your topic on food. And that's perhaps a, a whole other webinar that we could have you back or have you and Christina back in the fall to address, because uh, I'm sure that's pretty widespread in a lot of things we have to, we're getting better at it in some of the, the uh, events that we host, um, making us aware, but you know, um, if we don't, we, if we don't have an issue, we don't often think about it. And it's something we have to be very well aware of. So, so perhaps that's a whole other topic we could have you back in the spring, in the fall for. Uh, but thank you so much. Uh, I want to turn it over to our uh, our attendees, uh, we have a couple that have their hands up. I'm going to start with, uh, well, well, let's start with Denise Naughton first, and then Sharon uh, can go after. Ryan, Denise, go ahead. Thanks so much. Uh, PD George, PDG George. Um, thank you. Thank you very much for that. Uh, my day job is... Um, in the government, in a government office, uh, working with human resources. Uh, so I have had various uh, training webinars, sessions on accessibility uh, with diverse team uh, that we work with. However, I, uh, and we do address accommodations quite a bit. Um, I have to say that your presentation was very informative um, I thank you for that. You provided uh, a lot of great details that made me open up my mind uh, with thoughts of what, there's so many other um, accessibility issues other than just what many people think are physical only. There are many other disability issues where we have to open our minds and get creative and accommodate those that need that. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Denise. And uh, I'm Sharon, you can unmute yourself. Okay, I just wanted to thank you, George, and you, Jamie, and you, Nancy, for hosting this webinar. I think it's a, a big step forward in recognizing disabilities, mine and everybody else's. And uh, I just, again, I just want to thank you very much for uh, giving your time for this one tonight. It's, you know, as Lions, every time we get together, we learn something new. And, and these last two weeks, I've had my eyes really opened up. You know, you think you knew something about diversity and accessibility, and boy, was I wrong. Um, there's a lot to learn, and there's a lot more that we all need to learn um, on this important topic, these important topics. So. I think even people with the disabilities are still learning, you know, how to educate the public. Yeah. 
And uh, anyway, so uh, any other questions from attendees or anything in the chat? I don't see anything in the chat. Um, if there's nothing more, uh, Lion George, thank you so much again for participating tonight in your your meaningful presentation and Lion Nancy for assisting. Uh, as mentioned, we'll be uh, um, we recorded this and we'll post this to our YouTube channel and I'll, I'll Lion George when it's up, we'll send you the link. Thank you. Uh, we'll we'll distribute this uh, to our clubs to make sure that somebody in each of the clubs has a viewing of this because uh, there's a lot to learn and the clock's ticking, right? We got 30 months to get our act together. So, well, thank you very much for asking us. For Christina and myself, myself, this has been my passion my entire life, and. Uh, I enjoy this part knowing that I went to school to learn this, a school of my choice, a career of my choice. What a privilege. And I'm very passionate about doing these things. So I'm I'm happy to talk, <laughs> even with a funny voice. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much, George. And thank you. Yes. So. Thank you, George.